Hey guys, it's Dylan. So late last night, Zach tweeted, so I guess it's now kind of official that the SpaceX package Roadster does a 1.1 second zero to 60 miles per hour. But is this just speculation? Where is this coming from? And we can see this picture of a plaque. So if we zoom in, we see unveiled in 2017, yes, powered by lightweight lithium ion batteries and the Plaid powertrain, which by the way is one electric motor powering the front wheels and then two powering the back wheels. And the standard Roadster is supposed to do a zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds. But moving over, an announced SpaceX package would outfit the Roadster with cold air rocket thrusters positioned at the rear, allowing a zero to 60 time of 1.9 one seconds a rate largely unprecedented among modern road cars. And yes, this is the official plaque on display at the museum. But we need to talk about the Roadster for a moment because it's kind of fallen out of the cycle and for good reason, it was announced in 2017 and as of now, it looks like we're not gonna see any production until next year, 2022 at the earliest. But Tesla has said it would offer the base Roadster for $200,000 and that limited edition Founder Series for an extra 50,000. We don't have official details on what's gonna separate the two. Maybe it is the SpaceX package, but only time will tell. But we do know with a decent level of confidence that there will only be 1,000 Founder Series models ever built. And yes, most likely the Roadster is not gonna have a huge financial impact on Tesla's bottom line, especially when you consider the volume of the Model Y and hopefully the Cybertruck, but taking a quick look back of the napkin math that everybody in the Tesla community likes to do with that 200,000 average selling price and we'll say roughly and hopefully conservatively 30% margins, if they make and sell about 10,000 a year, that's $600 million extra in annual profits. And like I said, as far as we know, the first production is slated to start in 2022. And in response to a tweet from Tesla New York, Elon chimed in just recently, the production article will look different, even better. But the question is, is that 1.1 seconds even physically possible? And we get 2.5 Gs of acceleration. And so we can plug that into our velocity equals acceleration times time equation, 26.8 meters per second times 2.5 Gs times 9.81 times time. And time is 1.1 one seconds, zero to 60 in 1.1 seconds, which is about twice as good, uh, half the time as the next best thing that exists today as far as streetcars are concerned. So this is extremely impressive. Now it is important to state the disclaimers that go along with this. So this is assuming that the vehicle will be able to hover. It's assuming it's going to be able to use that amount of thrust in the rearward direction to push the vehicle forward. And it's also assuming that it will have enough thrust to last that full zero to 60 launch. I anticipate it will have enough to do it because I anticipate that this is gonna be a little party trick for how to have the fastest zero to 60 out there uh, of a street car. And so they'll wanna make sure that it will last the full duration. Um, so I would assume, you know, something around the 1.1 second time frame is realistic. If you start to increase this number, you know, think if this thing's actually going to accelerate upward, especially if it were to have several passengers in the car, it's going to we need to be significantly higher than 20,000 newtons. So if this were to just raise to 25,000 newtons, 21 or 25 kilonewtons there, that would give you 1.25 Gs. And in that scenario, you would have a dead on one second, zero to 60. So Engineering Explained, who is very reputable and respected, says it is indeed theoretically possible. And honestly, I can't wait to find out. And if you're wondering why this keeps getting pushed back, to me, it's really simple. Their production constrained and they need more battery cells. And this car, as I said, isn't going to be a huge impact to their bottom line. And they have bigger fish to fry, if you will, when it comes to the Model Y, Cybertruck, semi ramping and scaling the gigafactory so i really do hope they can start this at some level in 2022 but will this ever become a volume vehicle most likely not but remember that's not the point the point here is to lay the ultimate smackdown to the internal combustion engine and be better in performance in every single aspect and with these numbers it's not even going to be close and we can't forget the spoiler is indeed retractable i mean i've heard the rumors he also said it will be the fastest production car ever made, period. Big talk, but if everything he says is true, it will outperform all competing supercars at just a fraction of the cost. Very impressive.
And this will have all the features, obviously, the S has. Absolutely. Autopilot, auto emergency braking, the fun performance. You know, it's a driver's car. It's three motors in this car, two in the rear and one in the front. 10,000 meters of torque at the wheels. What's your top speed? The top speed is 250 plus. Really? It hurts the, the, the fluid in your eyeballs. Yeah, I, yeah, it's <laughs> almost like fighter plane. It's 600 miles on a charge? 600 miles on a charge, zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds. A quarter mile in 8.8 .8 seconds. Eight point, <laughs> that's just like drag race time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's hilarious. An 8.8 .8 second quarter mile in a production car is really amazing. How about a roaster that goes even faster than that? But let's see how fast we can go without leaving Earth. Ready to go for a little ride? Uh, sure, what do I need to do? So the only thing I would do, Jay, is put your head on the headrest. Why would I need to put my head on? Me too, Jay. But for that SpaceX package and to get that 1.1 second time, how would they do it? Elon said they're going to use ultra high pressure compressed air. It's a cold gas thruster. The main thruster will be like behind the license plate. So for acceleration, it drops the license plate and behind the license plate is a rocket thruster. And this right here is an awesome render from Slave Popovsky of what this might look and sound like. Pretty crazy. And the last official update I could find as far as timeline, Elon responded to Earl of Frank Puppy on Twitter, January 28th of this year. Finishing engineering this year, production starts next year, 2022. Aiming to have release candidate design drivable late this summer. Tri-motor drive system and advanced battery work were important precursors. But coming sooner to a dealership near you is the Model S Plaid. Tesla is going to have a delivery event on June 3rd at the California factory. Elon said the fastest production car ever, zero to 60 in under two seconds. And Ray for Tesla added in, the last quickest production vehicle is the 2015 Porsche 918 Spyder, which did 2.1 seconds, but it came with a hefty price tag of well over 870,000. But this is important because this means that yes, Model S Plaid deliveries are starting soon. We can presume June 3rd, at least some customers will be getting their orders. But no, it does not say anything about Plaid Plus. This just seemingly is for the Plaid only. But moving on, there is some speculation and rumors flying around about Elon in UK and potentially opening the next Gigafactory there. But let's take a look and see what's really going on here. Elon flew into the Luton airport on a private jet last weekend and stayed two days, say reports, which coincides with a hunt by the UK officials for a major new car plant location. And of course, flight tracking software showed that a private Gulfstream jet widely reported to belong to Elon landed at Luton airport from California. And the plane reportedly moved on to Germany where of course Elon did just pay a visit to the site of Giga Berlin. But here's one wet blanket statement. However, neither the government nor Tesla have confirm the speculation about Elon's brief stop in the UK. And also two years ago, Elon made it clear that Brexit uncertainty was a factor in rejecting the UK and choosing Berlin instead for Tesla's gigafactory over there. But British officials have not given up, stressing that outside the EU, those pesky state aid rules don't apply, which just means that there could be substantial government funding for a factory there, which we know Elon of course likes to capitalize on. So I personally am basically putting zero stock into this this report and this rumor, but it's at least something to be aware of and watch in the coming months. And I'm really curious what you guys think, where will Tesla's next Gigafactory be? And back to Elon's Twitter, he had this real cryptic picture tweet this morning, how much is that doge in the window? And here's the picture. So it says Cyber Viking in neon. There are some candles unlit in the back. We have what looks to be a gaming laptop with a $1 bill with the Doge Shiba Inu on the dollar. And this was early this morning at about 6.40 a.m. So let all of the wild speculation begin. All I really know is that I've heard people talk about Cyber Viking when they're referencing people going to Mars with SpaceX. Of course, it would make sense with the previous comments about sending Doge to the moon and the computer. People are talking about mining and there's all kinds of speculation. So what do you guys think from this, once again, Again, weird cryptic picture. 
only Elon, but that's that's why we love him, I suppose. And in case you somehow missed it, the Ford F-150 Lightning reveal was last night. It was a solid event. It was pretty quick, nothing special. The truck looks just like uh, any other Ford F-150. I'm not a truck guy, not something I'd ever be interested in, but here is a chart of the numbers if you wanted to take a screenshot. But the quick takeaway is none of the numbers are of course going to be on par or better than the Cybertruck. I don't think anybody actually expected that, but I do think this vehicle could do well. And it's funny because there's two camps of people. There's like the Tesla fans who only want Tesla to succeed because of Tesla stock ownership and they really don't actually care about electrification. And then there's the Tesla fans who really want the electrification. They want other EVs, they want competition, they want you know, a cleaner planet. And me personally, honestly, I vacillate back and forth. Like I definitely want other options and I want a cleaner planet and I want everything to be electrified. But there's definitely a little part of me that's like, loving Tesla just crushing the competition because of all of the hate and all of the flack and all of the FUD over the years that they had to deal with. It's really just rewarding for me to see Tesla crushing these legacy OEMs who have talked so much smack on Tesla. And most importantly, not one of them has ever really tipped the cap to Tesla to say, hey, the only reason we're even making this Ford F-150 Lightning is because Tesla is disrupting the entire auto industry. And I understand from a business standpoint, these companies can't really publicly applaud Tesla, but see, I think that's part of the problem. Like if we could all just start supporting each other and working together towards the same goals, the world would be such a better place. And I understand that's really never gonna happen uh, cause we're humans and we're flawed, but with all that being said, I hope that this vehicle does well. I definitely wanna test drive it and see what it feels like, but I personally will obviously never buy one, but let me know what you guys think. Did it exceed your expectations? But that's all I have for you. Thank you guys for watching. Please like this video if you did. A big thank you to everybody on the next screen and my newest patrons. I really appreciate the support. I hope you guys have a great day.